going on everyone so today we are looking at lead code number 896 a question called monotonic array okay so this question let's take a look at the prompt here an array is monotonic if it is either monotone increasing or monotone decreasing an array a is monotone increasing for all i is less than or equal to j a of i is less than or equal to j uh, a of j an array A is monotone decreasing if for all I is less than or equal to J and A of I is greater than or equal to A of J. Return true if and only if the given array A is monotonic. Okay, so we just need to figure out, here we have example one, we can see that all of these numbers are either increasing or equal to, so one is equal to or uh, one is less than or equal to um, two. 2 is less than or equal to 2, 2 is less than or equal to 3. Here we have a decreasing example, 6 is greater than or equal to 5, 5 is greater than or equal to 4, 4 is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, here we have a false, 1 is not, 1 is greater than or equal to 3, but then 3 is not um, less than, or I'm sorry, 1 is less than or equal to 3, but 3 is not less than or equal to 2. Okay, so there's three different uh, there's three different cases here, and we can see here last if they're all the same number, it's e equal to true. Okay, so one thing we can we can uh, determine from this question is is that the array is if it's monotone, it's going to be sorted. Okay, it's going to be a sorted array, and that means that whatever the last two elements of the array are we can determine how that array should, what direction that array should go. So we can have a variable that's going to be uh, for same, increasing, and decreasing. Okay. And now all we need to do is check if, and we just do this in the beginning, and we say if the first element of A is equal to the last element of A, then they're going to be the same. Then everything in the middle should be the same. If the first element of A is less than the last element of A, then the increasing should be true. And similarly, if if the first element of the input array is greater than the last element of the input array, then the decreasing is true. And now all we have to do is we just have to check if same is true, then we iterate over the array and we make sure everything else in that array is the same. And if something in that middle portion is not the same, we return false. With increasing, we do the same thing. We just iterate over the array and we say the, the two elements, we can grab the first one and the, uh, not the first one, the last one, but the two adjacent elements. We can do it by duples. We can check, are they, is the first element less than or equal to the next element? And if they're not, we return false. And respectively with decreasing, we do the same thing, except we check if they're greater than or equal to. Okay, and so what is our time and space complexity taking this approach? Well, we're going to only make one pass through the array because we're going to set these variables at the top and we only have to make one pass through the array. So, worst case, our time is going to be O of N because we're going to have to make one pass through that array. What about space complexity? Well, the only space we're creating is the same variable increasing or decreasing and we're just setting that to a boolean. 
we're not creating any extra space relative to the size of the input, so we're going to be able to do this in constant space. Okay, which is pretty good, which is pretty good indeed. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. So what we want to do here is we just want to set up our three variables. We can say let same equal a of zero equals a of a dot length minus one. Let increasing, I'll just say increase equals a of zero is going to be less than a of a dot length minus one and let decrease equals a of zero is going to be greater than a of a dot length minus one So now we have our variable set. Now all we have to do is create three conditionals and it, whichever conditional is true, we go ahead and scan the array and make sure that everything checks out. So if same is true, then we just do a for loop for let i equals one, because we're gonna start at the second one. We wanna check, the, we wanna check each, uh, each of these elements by twos i is going to be less than a dot length okay and so now here all we have to do is say if a of i minus one is um, not equal to a of i return false else we just go ahead and return true Okay, we can now do else if increase is true. We just pretty much do the same thing. We do for let i equal one, i is less than a dot length, i plus plus. And we wanna check if a of i minus one. So if it's increasing, if this is greater than a of i, then we want to return false, else we return true. And then else, there's only one other condition that could be, and that's decrease is true. We just do the same thing. For let i equal one, i is less than a dot length, i plus plus. And if a of i minus one is less than, a of i, we return false, else we return true. Now we do have three return trues here. What we could do is just, um, I think that, yeah, we may want to index. We might get a bug with, with how these are set up. So let's just go ahead and run that and we're good. Yeah, let's just see if we can refactor this. If we remove the trues here and just have one return at the end. Just might make the code a little bit cleaner. That should work as well. Yeah. Okay, so that is leap code number 896, monotonic array. It's a pretty good question. Um, I think if you just step through it step by step, it's not too hard to figure out. And uh, yeah, it's a fun one. So hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one.